Hello students, my name is Dr. Gajendra Purohit and I upload videos for engineering, mathematics and BSc on our YouTube channel if you are preparing for any competitive exam where higher mathematics is asked, our channel can be very helpful for you. So today I am going to explain how we can solve partial differential equations using the Fourier transform. Previously I explained how we can solve the partial differential equations using the Fourier sine and Fourier cosine transform and what kind of condition would be there so that we know whether we should use the Fourier sine transform or whether we should use the Fourier cosine transform or the Fourier transform to solve any partial differential equation. Now let's start. If any partial differential equation is given, be it heat equation or wave equation, we can solve it using the Fourier transform, but here there are some particular conditions. Look here, if within any question u 0 t is given or u at x is equal to 0 is given, then we apply the Fourier sine transform. If within any partial differential equation u x 0 t del u by del x at x is equal to 0 given, then we apply the Fourier cosine transform. I have already uploaded videos of this concept. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it through I button if we don't have these two conditions given and here both of them have x greater than 0, then if these conditions are not given and x is from minus infinity to infinity, so in that case we use the Fourier transform here. Is it clear? If we apply it to del 2 u by del x square, it will be minus s square u bar. Look, in both of these formulas, we get these two things, right? But when we will use the Fourier transform, what will be these two terms? They will become 0, right? And it will be minus s square u bar x minus infinity to infinity and when we apply the Fourier transform here at t, it will become du bar by dt. Let me tell you Fourier transform is always applied to x not to t and if we apply the Fourier transform to any ux t, then x becomes s, right? So you need to pay attention here. Now I will try to explain to you through some questions. I have already told you about the conditions and now one question is given del 2u by del t is equal to c square. Del 2u by del x square and ux 0 is equal to fx is given. And x from minus infinity to infinity is given and you are asked that you have to solve this equation by the help of the Fourier transform. So here what are we going to do? Here x is given from minus infinity to infinity and neither u 0 t is given nor u x 0 t is given. So neither we can use the Fourier sine transform nor we can use cosine. Then what will we do? We will use the Fourier transform on both sides. F del u by del t is equal to it will be fc square and pay attention here it will be del 2u by del x square right so look here students this will become d u bar upon dt is equal to here we will get its value it will be c square into minus s square u bar this is its formula here is it clear now when we will solve this so we will get d u bar divided by dt is equal to minus c square into s square u bar then this will become d u bar divided by u bar is equal to minus c square s square dt and when we will integrate it, it will become log u bar is equal to and here it will be minus c square s square. I am sorry, I forgot t will also come here plus this log a. So take log a here. This will be log u bar upon a is equal to minus c square s square t. Log will be removed, take u bar there. We will get a e to the power minus c square s square t. When we take the Fourier transform of something, so what exactly does u bar mean? In this, the Fourier transform, we will take the Fourier transform of uxt. So we will get 1 upon root 2 pi, limit minus infinity to infinity, e raised to the power iota sx, and here we will get u. xt and this will be dx. And what it will be? We will get its value. So now wherever is t, we will put 0 there. Then it will come here as f u x 0 is equal to this will become 1 upon root 2 pi, limit minus infinity to infinity, e raised to the power iota sx and this will become 0. This will be ux 0 dx and what is its value given here? It is given fx. Here we will get this u x 0 is equal to 1 upon root 2 pi, limit from minus infinity to infinity e to the power of iota sx. And what we will get as its value here? It will be fx dx. As we are getting its value, so we get a. We are getting this from here. So what will be the value of this a from here? The value of a which we will get here will be 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e to the power iota sx. fx dx now put this value of a here. So what will come here students? The Fourier transform of uxt is equal to 
when we will put this value here so this will be 1 upon root 2 pi limit minus infinity to infinity and e to the power iota sx since this will also come here and it will be e to the power minus c square s square t fx dx we will get this as its value but partial differential equation is in terms of uxt so the answer should also be in terms of uxt now what we will do we will take its inverse fourier transform its inverse fourier transform is uxt is equal to 1 upon root 2 pi and this will be from minus infinity to infinity e to the power iota sx and this value here it will be fuxt what will come here it will be into ds we will put this value there and 1 upon root 2 pi will come outside we will get 1 upon 2 pi here okay and minus infinity to infinity this will be e to the power iota sx and then we will put its value again so it will be minus infinity to infinity e to the power iota sx e to the power minus c square s square t what will we get here this will be fx dx and then here we will get this ds so in this way we can solve this question very easily this is its method that i have explained here you can see it is this clear if you are preparing for csir net iit jam or gate exams my books are available on amazon or flipkart you can buy them and now i will explain one more question based on this it is slightly different use the method of fourier transform to determine the displacement of yxt of an infinite string given that the string is initially at rest and the initial displacement is fx x is from minus infinity to infinity so you are asked what will be its solution it will be like this so whenever we have an infinite string then we have a wave equation and that equation is del 2 y upon del t square is equal to this will be c square here it will be del 2 y by del x square and in this we will write the conditions so the first condition is it is that initially it is at rest and the initial displacement is fx so first of all the initial displacement that is given here is fx this means that the value of y x 0 is given as fx here is it clear and we have another thing given here that the infinite string given that the string is initially at rest so if string is at rest then what will be its velocity it will become zero this means that here del y divided by del t at t equals to zero what will be the value of this it will be zero and one thing given here that what is value of x it is given between from minus infinity to infinity so how we can solve it here we know that we can very easily solve using the fourier transform right now what will we do we will take the fourier transform of both sides this will be the fourier transform of del 2 y by del t square and take minus c square outside and this will be fourier transform of this will be del 2 u sorry del 2 y divided by here del x square now we know here the value of this is d2 y by dt square and this will be c square now the value of this is minus s square into y bar right so on what is fourier always applied to it applies to x means the derivative with respect to x right you need to keep this in mind this will be d2 y bar by dt square plus c square s square y bar is equal to 0 this will be m square and we will write its auxiliary equation so c square s square is equal to 0 therefore m is equal to plus minus cs iota what will we get here this will be its value so the cf we will get here will be a and cos of cst plus b here sin cst so what we have got here this is the answer you need to keep in mind that what is this y given as so this y that we will get here it will be s this is actually y bar so this will be st right you need to pay attention because when we take the fourier transform we take it on y xt right and when we take its fourier transform it will be y bar st now we will apply the first condition on it right wherever we have t we need to put zero there right so wherever there is t we will put zero there on putting t as zero this will be y bar s0 st is 0 we will get cos 0 as 1 and sin 0 is 0 we get this condition here from the given question we get its value as fx so we will write y the value of x 0 we are getting as fx here but we need this so what will we do we'll take its fourier transform clear if we take the fourier transform of this let me tell you that usually the fourier transform is y bar st is equal to this will be 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e to the power iota sx and here this will be y and here it will be xt and this will be dx is this clear now wherever it is given t we will put zero so put zero in place of the t so this t will become zero and this t will become zero here now as i put its value here so pay attention this will be one upon 
root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity, the value we are getting here is fx. So, this will become e to the power iota sx, fx dx, that means this is the value that we are getting, right. So, students, as soon as we put that value, from here we will get value of y bar s0, we will get, here is 1 upon root 2 pi, limit minus infinity to infinity, e raised to the power iota sx, fx dx and from here we are getting a. It means when we merge these two, then we will get value of a. What will be its value? It will be 1 upon root 2 pi and limit from minus infinity to infinity. And it will be e to the power iota s x f x dx. Now, we will use the other condition. How do we use the other condition? We will have to take the derivative. Now, what do we do? We take the derivative of this y bar. It will be dy bar. Here, we will take dt. So, as soon as we take the derivative of this, because this is cause, its derivative will be minus a sin cst. And how we are taking the derivative here? We are taking the derivative with respect to t, then s will come here and c will also come. Clear? It will become minus cs and here what we will get? csb. It will be cos cst. Now, here we will put the condition in place of t. We put t as 0. You might think this is y bar, this is y, then how can we apply the condition? Because we are putting 0 for t here and not for s. So, we will write 0. What we will do? dy bar by dt at t is equal to 0. As I put t 0, sin will be 0. And the value of cos 0 will be 1 here. So, it will become CSB. And because its value is 0 here, this will become 0. It implies that we will get value of B as 0. We have got value of A. And we will take value of A and B and we will place it here. And then what we will get? We will get its answer. I will clean this so that you can easily see. I will take the values of a and b and put them here. Now, we will get the answer as y bar and then here we will get st is equal to. Now, we will take the value of a and put it here. Then from here, we will get the value as 1 upon root 2 pi and minus infinity to infinity. e to the power iota sx and fx and here dx and look from here, we will get this cos. Cst, right? It means it is multiplied with this. Now, we know that it is the Fourier transform of this fx, right? If we take Fourier transform of fx, it will be 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e to the power of iota sx fx dx. So, can I write y bar, this will be st is equal to, what can we write as its value here? We can write it as f bar s and here it will be cos cst. Now, what we will do? Because the differential equation we had was in terms of y. So, the answer should also be in terms of yxt. What we will do? We will take its inverse Fourier transform, right? So, what will we get here? y. xt is equal to 1 upon root 2 pi and this will be minus infinity to infinity. e to the power minus s iota sx and here y bar. st. dt. Sorry, I mean it will be ds, right? Because when we take the inverse with respect to s, then we do its integration. Clear? We will put this value here. We will get here 1 upon and its value will be root of 2 pi and limit minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus iota sx and here its value will be f bar s and then here. It will be cos of cst and from here we will get this ds clear. Now, see this cos cst here. We can write this here in the form of e to the power. I will need some more space here. Let us erase this a bit from here to solve it. I hope you have noted this down because there is no space on the board. So, I will have to erase it a bit. This value that we are getting from here is y. xt is equal to. This will be 1 upon root 2 pi and then this is going from minus infinity to infinity. e raised to the power minus iota sx. And then we will get fs as it is here. And now, we will have to write this cos cst here. So, we can write its formula here as e raised to the power iota. cst plus e raised to the power minus iota cst divided by 2 into. Here we will get ds, right? I have written the formula for cos cst here. Now, what we will do is bring this inside and we will get yxt and this one by 2 here, take this outside. Now, here we will write 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus iota sx e raised to the power iota cst and fs and it will be ds. Here, it will be plus 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus iota sx and e raised to the power minus iota cst and here it will be fs ds, right? Now, I am going to simplify this value a little bit. So, pay attention that the value that we will get from here is 1 upon 2, 1 upon root 2 pi. 
limit minus infinity to infinity here we are going to take e to the power of minus iota as common what we will get x minus ct into f s d s plus here also we will get 1 upon root 2 pi it will be minus infinity to infinity take e to the power minus iota s common here so this will be x plus ct and f s d s here therefore here we will get its value now here we are noticing that if there is any function and suppose if i take a function f x here f x minus c t so students this is what we get as its fourier transform and this is what we get as its inverse we can write it like this plus here we will get f here it will be x plus c t right because students when we will take the fourier transform then its inverse here will be this and we can write it in this way therefore this is how we can prove it and we can easily solve it as well this question is for the comment box how much time did you take to solve please comment and let me know you can watch the entire series on fourier transform from this playlist if you are preparing for the csir net gate or iit jam exams then you can watch the related videos from there and please subscribe to the channel thank you very much everyone